In terms of dating apps, so do you think that's damaging relationships today or do you think it's making them better? The truth is women have a lot more access to guys that 50, 60 years ago. We don't live in a localized dating place mm. now because before you'd just be choosing from the people in your class or your village. Now, like if you're a, you know, an average guy from Norfolk, you're, compare, you're competing with the hotshot lawyer from London, the producer from LA, the basketball player from France. For women, it's generally getting the serious commitment and for guys, it's can I even get a date really? You know, we know this from study two years ago, 30% of guys between ages of 18 and 30 haven't had sex or are still virgins. How you are with your boys, does your girlfriend still like you? That's a great question. That's a great question. A guy being in the friend zone with a girl is the same as a girl being in the friends with benefit zone with a guy. Getting into a relationship for a guy, and this is ironic considering what's just happened, is kind of like getting a puppy. Anyone that's only listening, we're sitting here nodding. <laughs> we are nodding. <laughs> Joe is not here today and we've joined with Lauren as a co-host, which we're very, very excited for. And our lovely guest as well, Kit. Kit, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, man. Excited to be here. Could you start off by telling the listeners a bit about you and a bit about your story? Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Kit. I'm born and bred in London. Uh, I'm an actor and dating coach. I'm also a dating coach now as well. And, you know, I've been doing that for the past four years. I've been acting for the past 10, 11 years. Uh, and yeah, I have a, you know, I primarily coach women, I coach guys as well. Um, but all my dating advice is tailored about how to attract the kind of person you want for a relationship. What got you into that? Like, what got you started? Yeah, so I've always had male and female friends come to me for dating advice. Um, and they always felt that my advice really helped them. Um, and then I just started, you know, putting it out for fun. You know, I'm a creative person, so yeah. just kind of putting it out on YouTube for fun. Um, and then I started to gain a lot of traction and then people started messaging me being like, oh, like, I really love your content. It's really helped me. Can you help me through this situation? I was like, yeah, sure. And then that's kind of just how I started coaching people. Um, and fast forward three years later, here we are. How's it been being an actor as well? We've mm. we've had, um, we were, well, we were going to have an actor on. He's, there's there's going to be one coming on soon, so I won't say the name yet. Okay. But we've got an actor coming on, and we, I wanted to hear sort of their story a bit about it. Um, mm. Someone I went to school with, very cool guy, and he was in, uh, the th this is what I was trying to remember before, he was just in the um, the play, the play, the thing on Netflix with, oh, about that young girl with, oh, you know what? Anyway, and he was basically saying like, how Gambit, tough it is. No? No, it's, I'll, I'll remember it after. We'll when you're to. talking like halfway through, I'll be like, that was yeah. it. Here we go. <laughs> it's always, like the case. It's always the case. Um, and he was basically just talking about how hard it is to break through the scene, mm. break through the act scene. How, how did you find it coming up? Yeah, so I think I was quite fortunate because I booked a really big job straight from drama school. Um, I trained in musical theatre. So half my jobs have been like musicals and half has been like TV uh, and film as well. Um, so I, I booked a job before graduating um, and then that job transferred into the West End and anyone who knows theatre, kind of once you have a West End credit on your CV, a lot of doors open for you. So I've done multiple West End shows, uh, tours, dinner at the Opera House. Um, so, yeah, and then I won Best Actor for one of my films last year and then there are two films I star in coming out next year, which I'm not allowed to say yet. Um, so we'll see how well those do. Um, so, yeah, the past few years I've been a bit of a transition because I've done a lot of theatre and I've ticked a lot of the boxes that I wanted to do. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to work with like big directors like Philip Lloyd, who's like BAFTA award winning, awesome. Rupert Gord again, BAFTA, you know, with Oprah Winfrey, Whoopi Goldberg, Tina. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I've been transitioning over the past few years. So, um, yeah, I've started to delve more into the screen and TV. I've been doing a lot of um, voiceover work as well. I've been stepping into the games, doing voiceover games, which is so much fun because um, I'm a bit of a nerd. I love video games. So that's <laughs> kind of a fun little thing for me. Um, so, yeah, so juggling that and then the coaching and then the content creating and stuff like that. I have periods in acting when I'm super busy and I'm and then juggling with this. I'm just working around the clock. Yeah. And then when I have like more quieter moments, then my coaching kind of takes up the majority of my day. What do you prefer? Uh, the acting or the coaching? Yeah. Oh, that is hard. That's like, what do you prefer, breakfast or dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the mood, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, acting is always, acting has always been play for me. Yeah. Um, so... You know, I've never, I've been fortunate in my journey, but I've never, I've been fortunate enough, I've never had to say yes to a job for the financial side. So it's always been like play for me, which has been amazing. And some jobs pay amazing well, and some jobs don't pay that well at all. Mm. Um, the coaching side, I love, I love seeing my clients make progress. Um, and I love having conversations. I love, you know, 
hearing different perspectives. So I love content creating. Um, I love, I really enjoy coaching for, you know, especially seeing my clients, you know, kind of make those strides and get what they want. Um, if I had to choose one, that is, I don't know if I can answer that. I know that's a poor answer, but I, one is like real play for me and the other is like really like, oh, this is my part that I'm doing for the world. As mm. cringe as that sounds. Does that, that make sense? True. No, I, yeah, I get Do you know that. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really fair to enjoy both equally. You don't yeah. need to have a favourite and that's why you do both. Yeah, yeah, 100%. What are some of the most common problems you find in relationships today mm. in a world that I think is getting progressively harder to date in? 100%. So the problem, the main problem for men and the main problem for women is different. The main problem for most guys is getting the opportunity with the kind of girl that they want. Can they even get on a date with a girl? Which most guys don't, they struggle. You know, we know this from a study two years ago, 30% of guys between ages of 18 and 30 haven't had sex or are still virgins. Do you know what I mean? Or haven't really? had sex in the past Between what year. age, sorry? 18 and 30. Really, okay. Yeah, so I think this was a study from 2023 or 20, 2022 or 2023. You know, 30% of men hadn't had sex in the past year or were virgins. So it's a lot harder for guys. And the big reason why it's a lot harder for guys is because as technology has evolved and we have more access to people, the truth is, um, you know, women have a lot more access to guys that 50, 60 years ago they wouldn't have access to, right? So we don't live in a localized dating place mm. now because before you'd just be choosing from the people in your class or your village. Now, like if you're a, you know, an average guy from Norfolk, you're compare, you're competing with the hotshot lawyer from London, the producer from LA, the basketball player from France. So for a lot of guys, the most difficult part is, can I actually, how do I get on a date with the actual kind of girl that I want? For women, it, getting dates tends to be quite easy. It's getting the commitment, getting the serious investment. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going on dates with loads of these people, but you know, he's either not showing up the way he's saying that he's going to, or he says he wants something serious and then he just ghosts me, or like I just start to feel him pull back from me. So yeah, so for women, it's generally getting the serious commitment. And for guys, it's, can I even get a date really? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. A anyone that's only listening, we're sitting here nodding. <laughs> <laughs> we are nodding. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah, that tends to be it. In terms of dating apps, yes, this is something that to be fair, I've seen quite a few things where it's like come out successfully, but mm. do you think that's damaging relationships today or do you think it's making them better? Dating apps is, it's a, it's like anything, it's a tool. It's really dependent on how the individual uses it. I think it's kind of like asking the question, okay, is, is alcohol damaging us or is it kind of good for us? Well, use nice and correctly. It's actually an amazing thing to for people to have fun, mm. be part of the festives, et cetera but you abuse it and that's when it becomes toxic. So dating apps is because it's the first, you know, previous five, six, seven, eight years, we've never had to take responsibility to how to use this kind of technology and how do we use it in a way that serves us like in a way, because there are things where, okay, we know we want to do this, but this is actually what's best for us, right? So I know you and I were talking before you're a yeah. PT, yeah. you know, I know that I can easily devour a whole pack of Oreos, but if I have a fitness goal, I know I can't be doing that, so I'm not going to put it in the house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it comes to dating apps, um, it is how you use it. I think it makes it harder. It makes it harder for guys because they're competing with everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's more accessible for women, which is great. But then a lot of time, the guys that they're dealing with, because only a very small percentage of men actually get the majority of the matches. So like, have you heard of the uh, Pareto principle? No. So it's basically, it's the 80-20 rule, essentially. So 80% um, of the galaxy's mass is held in 20% of the stars in our galaxy, right? 20% of cities in the world hold 80% of the galaxy's mass of the population rather. 20% of cities in the world hold 80% of the population. 20% of authors are responsible for 80% of books sold, right? If you own a company or a business and you're in sales, you know it's 20% of your high performers, they're earning 80% of the revenue. So when you have a free market, there seems to be like a natural law that just tends to happen and fall into place. Mm. And dating has become a globalized free market. So what you're now getting is you're getting 20% of the men, getting 80% of the opportunity of the women.
So you have these women wanting these top 20% guys and it's very difficult to lock that kind of guy down because he has an abundance of options. So unless he's ready to settle down, it's like, what's the incentive? And you get the 80% of men who don't even get a look in with the majority of women because they can exercise these kind of higher quality guys. Does that make sense? That yeah. makes complete sense. Yeah. It's funny when someone like explains it, <clears throat> like you yeah. just explained it, it's very obvious. Mm. For the people listening who might be in the 80% of men yes. at the moment, what advice would you give to them? I would say, I would say build your value as a man. And I'd focus on these four areas to begin with. Definitely focus on your fitness because that's going to improve your mindset mm -hmm. as well. Um, definitely focus on your finances, right? That's not saying you have to become rich, but put yourself in a position where you can look after yourself financially, right? Because just stability, that's going to be attractive to women anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be Jeff Bezos but can you look after yourself? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, confidence, that comes to mindset as well. Do you know what I mean? Work on your confidence. The thing is about the, the pro to being, a, there's pros and cons to everything. The con with being a guy is that there's a lot of work you have to do upfront before you even get the opportunity with the girl, mm -hmm. right? Because, and a lot of guys don't realize this, but girls decide whether they'd go on a date with you or not, before you even maybe know they exist because they're already looking at you and observing you seeing is this the kind of man that I would choose. So yeah, I would say fitness, finances, confidence. And the last thing I would say is, I would say learn how to flirt with the world. And that doesn't mean like you're flirting with every single person, yeah. but like, let's say you're just getting a coffee and you like the guy's hairstyle, just be like, hey man, I really dig your hairstyle, man. That's really cool. Just being open to engaging because that kind of energy, not only is it infectious, but it lifts your energy and your vibration as well. And even if there's a woman in the room who maybe she might be taken, she's going to be like, oh, he's an interesting person. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your view? You talked about that before. Yeah, but. no, I'd agree <laughs> with everything you said. But I'd mm. also say, like one thing I've experienced is like you want to be more interesting, right? So go out and do experiences. Mm. experience things so you have more to talk about because I feel like there's a lot of people that are just just work just gym and and go home yes which is great like if you love all of that that's amazing mm. and if someone matches with that then even better yeah. but I have found that if you can go out and say you know I've done this that the other and just talk about what you've done in your life like however big or small if you're passionate about it yeah. like that's really attractive 100%. rather than just working and just gymming and just going home yeah it's like there's so much more to life yeah. And you're and you're already open to experiencing it. And yeah. personally, I think that's really attractive. Hundred percent. There's one thing I would add. This might be controversial. Mm -hmm. um, work on your masculinity. I know we live in a day and age of equality. Women are strong, independent. Women are actually out earning their male counterparts now under the age of thirty. And especially from a lot of women I've talked to, whether they're doing well in their career or not most of them always express that they prefer to be a masculine man who has certain leadership qualities, regardless of whether they can or not. Because especially if you're the kind of woman who you want to have a family and settle down, which most do, you need to be able to choose a man that you can trust, who you can rely on, who can be a foundation for you, who can provide the frame for you, right? Especially if you're, as a woman, you bear children. So there's a level of vulnerability that comes with that, no matter how successful, independent or strong you are. And especially our generation, as guys, we've been told that being masculine is wrong and toxic. Now there are definitely some, masculinity is kind of like, it's kind of like a sword. It can be used for good or it can be used for evil. So masculinity itself isn't toxic, but it's how you use that. And part of doing that is becoming a capable man who takes responsibility. Because that's what a man used to do, right? He would take responsibility for himself, for his family, for his children, right? And there's pros and cons that come with that. You know, a lot of time the pro with that, at least historically, would be, OK, well, when the final call needs to be made, you know, can you make the final call? Can people trust you to do that? And if stuff goes wrong, everyone's looking at you. Mm. But the pro to that is that if you become that kind of man who can look after your family properly, the people around you, be a man that you can, people can rely on, um, then that's one of the most fulfilling experiences as a man to take responsibility for others. Completely agree with all of that. With Joe and I talk about that a lot. Mm. about that masculinity side of things. Can I talk about what we spoke about yeah. downstairs as well when you said about masculinity and having kids and stuff? Remind me, yes, please. I've so, already. <laughs> Laura and I were talking downstairs about 
like past relationships and like having kids, right? Yeah. Not mm. Laura. I've got a girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, we were talking about kids, and you were like, oh, "I've never really wanted kids," but oh, the only yeah. person I've thought I've wanted to have kids with was your ex. Yeah. Mm. And that's because he was more masculine. Yeah. And yes. there's a few other so, reasons, and that so, was. Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I've had a couple of re- relationships in the past. Mm. And I think, so I've had three. I had my first two boyfriends. They were they were great. Um, obviously didn't work out. And then I had my third boyfriend. And he was the first guy that I ever felt that I would want to go into having a family with. Now, albeit, that was all early 20s. So it was mm. still very early days to be thinking about it. Yeah. However, when I was with him, he did carry that mes- masculine energy that the ex-boyfriends didn't. Mm-hmm. Where there was like a security and a future Mm-hmm. that could have been seen from that so it kind of changed my perception on it wasn't that I didn't want kids it was probably that I wasn't in the right situation and actually going forward that's the kind of energy I'd want yes if that makes sense can I ask you a question mm-hmm. were there certain things you look did you look up to him in certain ways um look up to him I really respected him like mm. he worked really hard yeah um which I loved because equally I've always worked really hard so I think that's something that really attracted me to him in the first place so mm. because he was always out working really hard and equally equally so was I mm. we'd always just come come together in our spare time and I just think am I going on a tangent I feel like I've lost no, go for it. but yeah basically he mm. <laughs> um but yeah um I've, I've kind of forgotten the question sorry no yeah <laughs> so good. I think it's um And correct me if I'm wrong, I think I've met a few women who've had that experience Mm -hmm. where they're like, oh, I'm not sure if I want a family. They meet that one guy and they're like, "Mm, I definitely want one Mm. just with the right person, Mm -hmm. the right kind of guy. And I think when you can be that man who can provide a level of security and safety, which is a deep desire that many women want, even if they can provide it for themselves, they deeply desire the ability a man can do that. I think that can often bring out that so I've just, yeah, I've remembered now as well. Yeah, go I'm for b- it. Here, I'm back. I'm go back. For it. She's back. <laughs> I'm back. She's back. I'm like, it's come. But yeah, no. So because he worked so hard, etc., he had that, but he had the ability to provide. Yeah. He, you know, he had a home. He had a, a well-paid job. Mm-hmm. And I think with that, it was like sort of a sense of relief that if I had to take my foot off the pedal, mm-hmm. I could rely on him. Yes. Does that make sense? I feel 100%. like that's pretty much what you've just said, and that's exactly 100%. what I think. I went into the situation and was like, it, it'll be okay, mm. and I think. That's nice to have. Is is it imperative? I don't know. Maybe not for everyone. Mm. But I do think that, you know, it's going to be a teamwork. So if one person's going to have to step back, the other person needs to step up. Mm. And yeah, that's something I definitely definitely look for moving forward. And yeah. until then, we're just cruising. She's cruising. <laughs> what yeah. are some traits which, you know, we'll talk about from a lady's point of view. If you're a guy, what are like three key traits that you would say? You talked about masculinity before. Talks about a few different things there. Hard working. That's that's one for me. That well, if I'm with a girl who's hard working, I see her. I mm. myself, that's a big turn on for me. Like mm. that's something that I'm instantly attracted to more. Yes. Would you say that there's like three key areas or like three key sort of traits, or does it kind of differ per person on what that what men like look stand for? out? Yeah. Um, I would say from the guys that I've talked to, and I'd say a lot of you know guys or circles that i've been in they're kind of they're the kind of guys that a lot of women would be like this kind of guy i would want to choose um femininity is very important to them um in that sense um someone who respects him that's a massive one yeah respect is love to men and this is one of the first things i teach women like respect is love to to a man you know like if if you as a woman if you are if you have a full-blown argument with your man in front of company you're basically saying i don't respect you which he hears is i don't love you i don't respect you as the man in this relationship obviously respect goes both ways but respect for men is very important um and i would say a place of peace for him is really important for men because as a man you if you're going to be taking on that responsibility of the relationship to provide the frame provide the safety make her feel safe and secure right and not just physically maybe not even just financially but also emotionally all the time you take on a lot of responsibility as a man and then you have to go out and then earn certain money and it's you know cost of living nowadays like if you're with the kind of guy where you don't have to work that's a luxury 
ladies that is a luxury Absolutely. most most households need two incomes so if he's doing that the question you want to ask yourself is how can i make his life easier like the last thing he wants is someone who brings stress and drama to his life now if there's something that's serious of course talk to him you have to mm -hmm. communicate that you don't want to hold that in but you know something my grandma said to me with her 65 year odd, odd year marriage you know how to choose your battles you know like maybe you asked him to do the dishes one night and he didn't do it and you wake up in the morning it's not been done and that's really frustrating completely understand that but then if this guy provides for you if he takes care of you if he's honest with you he makes sure you're okay he considers you you feel seen and heard right and he doesn't do this thing let it go so essentially a place for him to be like vulnerable because mm. and i think well i think that's really important for yeah. both ways in a relationship but yeah, yeah create a safe space for him to come home because if he has to go to work and have this front etc and you know friends work all of the rest of it mm. like the person you should be able to come home to is that partner yeah he's gonna create that space for you to relax be calm hundred mm. percent do girls want a guy to be vulnerable in front of them though yes do they yes yeah, I think sharing emotions is really important. Like genuinely, I've always much preferred it when I'm in a situation where both of you are able to vocalise how you're feeling. Because I think real realistically, if he's not saying how he feels, it's, it's a guessing game, right? Mm. Or, you, you know, okay, he looks a bit mad. Maybe I've done something wrong when actually perhaps you should just say it. So I think there's a caveat to that. I, yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I think men have to earn that with her. Okay. So I think there's such a thing as him being too vulnerable too soon. Because that if she doesn't, if she's not as emotionally invested enough where she is choosing him for who he is, as opposed to what he is, right? Then that could come across that he is not, he is not a stable foundation that he can be for her. So I think it's not that men shouldn't be vulnerable, they should, but there is such thing as being vulnerable too soon and i'd say the equivalent is like a woman sleeping with a guy too soon right mm -hmm. a lot of the time if he's not emotionally invested and you're kind of giving everything straight away then he's less likely to see it as an investment he just sees it as oh this is someone who can be a casual option for me because he's not emotionally invested so yes guys should be vulnerable um it takes a lot for a guy to be vulnerable a lot of trust has to be built same with the woman when you share your body with a man you know like not to sound crude, but he is entering into you, right? It's a very vulnerable thing. And mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, most most of the time, the guy, he might be bigger or stronger than you, right? So that's a very vulnerable position for a woman to be in. So even if a woman sees a guy and he's like, oh, I would just, he's hot enough, I'd hook up with him. You still want to talk to him to make sure he's not a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So I'd say with guys, when it comes to being vulnerable, if you're in a relationship, you've already said, I trust this woman. So 100% be vulnerable. Um, I think that you may disagree. I don't think he should go to her with all his problems, though. I think that's something he should reserve for either like a mentor of his or even his guy friends. Not because well, that's the burden we take. Yeah. But so, right, your one person shouldn't be your everything, right? That's why you have communities and groups of friends and whatnot, because you can go to them with individual yes but i would say that i think a woman going to a man with all her problems i would say fine really? i don't think a man should do it the other way around no see what i find hard is i try and keep work meg's probably listening to this being like shut up <laughs> uh, I, I try and keep work separate for our relationship yes but a lot of my stress comes from work yes dealing with clients dealing with the financial side of things yes bringing money in money out paying people it's stressful mm. it's stressful running a business it's 100%. stressful trying to find your feet and once it is going you know things go wrong things go wrong every day a lot of my stress comes from that and when i go back to relationship i'm stressed from that mm -hmm. and she's like what's wrong like i, I what well, can you open up about it like we'll talk about it mm. but then i don't want to unload everything onto her yes and then the bits we do talk about because we have a very like open communication like that's one of the best things about the relationship. I think that's why it's it's been three and a half years now. And it feels Amazing. it's been great so far. We maybe had one argument or whatever mm. in three and a half years, which is awesome because we're so open. Like if if there's a trouble, if she's stressed, she's like, Tom, I'm stressed. I just need a bit of space. I yes. do the same, and that's perfect. Yeah. But I don't want to bring that work side in. 
mm. but she doesn't know anything that's going on on that front. So she's like, what are you actually doing work-wise at the moment? But I try and keep that separate. Yeah. Do you reckon I should bring that in a bit more? This is just from my point of view. Bring yeah, that yeah, in yeah. a bit more or and be completely open about it or should I try and keep them a bit more separate still? But that's yeah. the one thing I think I need to work on we've talked about recently. Yeah, I hear that. I think I, there's nothing wrong with her. You know, she's asking, oh, what, like, what's going on? You're like, oh, you know, I'm sorting this out with this client or, you know, and they didn't follow through with this, etc. There's definitely nothing wrong with you openly sharing what's going on. Mm -hmm. I guess when I was referring to the problems as in, like, every time you're stressed or every time something's gone wrong and you are feeling that a lot is happening, that you do just go and download onto her. And it's not that you shouldn't share, but the reason I say it's about being conscious of that is especially through a lot of men and women that I've spoken to, it's more about, you know when I said like, almost like sometimes guys have to earn that? Mm -hmm. If she's coming to you, if she's like, oh, I wanna know, then I think absolutely share. But I think if your energy that you're bringing yeah. to the relationship is just stress, complaint, etc., You just come at the house and straight away you're like, this happened or this happened when she hasn't... Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, like, I mean, we must have all had that yeah. person where it's like, all they do is complain half the time. So how yep. draining is that? So draining. But then completely, you're, I agree, man. Like, I run a business, I get it, you know. When you're stressed as well, like, your relationship is separate. So you want to try and inject loving energy into that when you can. Now, you're not going to be 100% all the time. That's normal. We're all human, right? Um, so I would say it's not that you shouldn't share what's going on. I just think be more cautious of just downloading all the emotional baggage onto her from your work because if there's nothing she can really do about that, you know, then it's like, it's good to have someone to listen to when it's a bit much. And, you know, like I had a girlfriend where she was there for me. My, my, my dad passed, do you know what I mean? So she understood, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, just don't, I don't think it should be like, that's always the emotional bag you unload everything onto. I have a question on the vulnerability. Yes. So you said don't be too vulnerable too soon. Yes. What's too soon? Like, why, why would it be too soon? Because if it was the right person who was willing to accept you and want to learn more about you, like, how can you define being vulnerable too soon? Sure. So I think one thing, this is a, a nice reality to admit, but when we start getting to know someone, we're choosing them because of what they are, not who they are, because we don't know who they are. Right? So if, I, you know, if we go on a date with someone, it's because... You know, and we may get to have known them before, and I guess that's different because okay. you might it's have like known dating out versus meeting them through friends or work exactly, or whatever. yeah. So I would say too soon is where it's hard to tell as a guy, but there becomes a point when you're when you're dating a girl where she starts to really choose you for who you are as opposed to what you are, right? So for a lot of guys, when they go on a date with a girl, it's because she would have looked at him, she would have said yes because she would have been like, oh. You know, he's either attractive, you know, he's ambitious, he's, you know, he's intelligent, etc. So he's he's being chosen for what he is. And then getting to know him is when she goes, oh, is this the kind of man I want to choose? Because just because you date a guy, that doesn't mean you're going to choose him, right? Mm -hmm. So it's when, as a, I would say as a guy, when she starts to choose you for who you are, and that's when she is inquiring, like, oh, like, tell me about this, how you feel about this, or I want to meet your best friends, I want to meet your family, because I'm actually wanting to get to know you. Um, just like Coco's trying to get to know you. Right <laughs> For those of you listening, Coco the dog is on the sofa with us. But if you hear any little pig right now. piglet noises, that's Coco, not me, I promise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Snoring away. <laughs> <laughs> I think, sorry to, oh, yeah, I go, to go. One thing I always find with my friends, and mm. I feel like this is a thing that comes up a lot, is trust in yes. relationships. Once that trust is broken, mm. do you think it's possible to rebuild it in a relationship or is it kind of gone? it's it's i'm not going to say it's never possible but it really depends on what happens and not everybody will choose to rebuild mm. so there are some people who rebuild from you know infidelity from cheating and there's some people who somebody lied about something that you know maybe did they just lied about being in a relationship with someone or they just lied about <laughs> an ex or something um <laughs> And they and for some people it's like that's it they can't reveal because they feel their trust so it can but I it's you have to choose the individual it. isn't it it's how somebody navigates their own emotions and how they can move forward from things because if they don't feel they can trust and move on then yeah that's yeah. it isn't I, it really? I think the second when trust has been broken majorly I think you both have to understand okay the relationship you had that's over mm. like it's done mm. 
Now you're building a new one. Yeah, it starts fresh. You're building, you're building a new one. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I'd say it can, but it, it depends on the individual. Yeah, trust is a hard one. I think I really struggled with trust in all relationships. I don't know if that's just something from growing up potentially, like something that's always been a part of me. But the minute I felt that sort of trust and it had nothing to do with with the girl, it's just, it was always there for some reason. I don't know, that could be insecurity or whatever it is. Yes. But now in my current relationship, the minute I felt that trust where I was like, I back you, like I, I trust you. It just, it took the relationship to like a whole nother level. Yes. There'll be guys listening to this and, and girls listening to this as well who will struggle with the trust side of things. Mm. Do you have any advice around that? Because this is something I just had to kind of just suck up and like mm. just deal with in a way. But is it, would you give any advice to that trust side of things? Yeah. Or the way to kind of like not battle it Mm. sort of like suppress that feeling in your head because it has nothing to do with that person normally because you've just met them or you've just got to know them it's sort of underlying from stuff in your past yeah of course so i would definitely say i would say don't suppress it because if that's coming up that could be to down to a past trauma right or past experience and ask yourself a lot of times about asking yourself the right question so okay what is it i'm feeling here okay i don't like that i don't know I don't like that she's going to a hen party. Okay, why don't I like that? Because I think she's gonna get involved with another guy, etc. Okay, so do I think she's gonna leave me? Yes, right. Why do you feel this fear of abandonment? Where's that coming from? Oh, well, because there was one time when I was 10, my mom left me alone in my Tesco's for two hours and I didn't know she was gonna come back. So I would say the first thing is ask yourself those questions. Then ask, okay, what is the intention of the person? So even if they're doing something that might be making me feel insecure, is that do they have the intention of actually wanting to still be with me? Can they hear me when I say this? And then don't be afraid to say, hey, look, this is just something I need a little bit of reassurance on. Mm -hmm. And if their intention is in the right place, they should go, yeah, no problem. Like if the reassurance you need is that I just drop you a text every couple of hours, like maybe a little selfie or let you know what I'm up to. If they care about you, you that's not a big right? deal right communication you yeah need to, you need to voice your concerns and if mm. you lack trust then you just need to communicate that yeah because it's it, that person would need to understand it's not them that you distrust but yes. it's that person should be able to give you the reassurance yes and yeah work with you if their intentions are to continue into a healthy relationship right? on, on communication are there any sort of like common communication mistakes that you found through working with with clients or whatever that you've mm. been like, ah, I, I spot that coming up quite a lot on the communication front. Yes. Um, so I think sometimes people can say, you made me, oh, I did this because you did this. Okay. It's like, oh, well, I had to, you know, take this action because you took this action. And it's like, we're all responsible for our own actions. You can say, okay, you can say this is the reason I did this because I thought this was the best thing to do, but the only person responsible for your actions is you. Mm. Um, and so part of that is, I think sometimes we have to take more agency, especially when we're like emotionally, I would say triggered, but kind of in an emotional state mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, because that's when we can do random things, especially like Coco. She who's she, she fighting for? She got the <laughs> I, mean, I was like, you are really serious. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> listening to you like this is so good, but well, everyone's got here just <laughs> 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 the doctors are running around. I was trying not to laugh. And I, I did say quite she's going to be the topic. main star. She is the main star. She is the star. Coco, come here. Coco, come here. She, she is, okay, she is the star. I bet those cats here. sound great in the mic. She's like, I need some reassurance now. You guys are neglecting me. That's why she's she's looking for attention. <laughs> okay, come here. Do you come with me? Coco. Pause come on, on the Coco. question so we can hit the sofa until she pays attention. <laughs> no, she's like, oh, she's attention. we'll carry on anyway. And Coco will have the zoomies and run rounds. There we go. Um, in terms of sort of like couples growing apart, this mm. is one that I've seen quite a lot again with my friends is like they get to that point where they feel like they're growing apart. They feel like they're in the relationship, but you know, if they broke up tomorrow, would it be the end of the world? But they're kind of sticking in it because it's familiar to them. Yeah. What advice would you give on both sides, men and women, for that? Yeah, of course. Um, I think I would say, I don't think my advice would be different based on men or women. Um, ask, us, ask yourself this question, do you see a future with this person? 
that's the main thing really yeah, I agree. and if the answer is no then you already know what to do mm. and that doesn't mean they're not a great person that doesn't mean you've not had an amazing relationship you're allowed to grow apart you're allowed to grow apart people change people evolve etc now or rather ask yourself is the f- is this person someone i want to work the future with right because if you're gonna be together forever that's gonna happen isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Coco hates relationships. She's single she at the moment. She's like, I'm looking for my man. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I would, I would say, ask yourself, do you see a future with this person? Is this someone you could see yourself working the future with? Um, if the answer is no, then yeah, that's what I'd say. Sack it off. That's a hard conversation yeah. to have, though, especially if you've been with someone for a while. Mm. Just I think it's a fair conversation. Yeah. So my second relationship is I just said to him, just see our lives looking very different like mm. i can see myself going this way and you remaining what you're in and that's fine it doesn't mean that i don't don't love you for the person that you are mm. but i just don't see this like it doesn't have legs it's not going to continue into the future that i want and i have to be selfish and voice that yes there was no point in me staying in a relationship because he was a really nice person like and he's going to make an amazing husband to somebody else mm. you know hats off to him he's a, such a great guy mm. but our futures just didn't align not for me yeah even if he felt sometimes good. those are harder because it's like there's nothing wrong mm. oh, yeah. so you're questioning yourself like okay there's nothing yeah. wrong why do i feel like this should end but it's because just because there's nothing wrong doesn't mean it's right exactly so. interesting that's a good point actually mm-hmm. you did a post earlier which i just thought i'd read out yeah, for everyone who it. hasn't seen it and you said the most attractive women doesn't sorry the most attractive woman doesn't get the guy the most valuable woman does yes what do you mean by that can you explain that a bit more depth for the people listening yeah of course so we live in a day and age where attention is currency and kind of the standards for like physical appearance and attraction has been so exacerbated for women for sure it has been for decades but even for men now um, I think there are a lot of women who think, oh, well, as long as I'm attractive enough, as long as I have the right lips, the right bum, the white waist, the right, all of this, I'll get the guy that I want. And then sometimes you see these really desirable guys that they want and they're with women who maybe aren't the most attractive, etc. And they're like, how did that happen? Like, why? And it's because when you get into a relationship with someone, you're, you're both adding value to each other's lives. Right? Like we said earlier. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It doesn't, like, it doesn't sound nice to say, but the definition of a relationship is an exchange of comparable value. So if you know how to add value to the other person's life in ways that other people don't, then you're, you're, for them, you're like, oh, that's the person I want to choose. Sometimes, and you know, I've coached women who are super attractive, like they're like models, they get flying out and they're models for like, you know, like Gucci or like you know, Zara and all this stuff. And because they've been so used to getting everything they want because of how beautiful they are, especially growing up, they're dating guys who, you know, maybe they would want something with, but then it's like, it's just not going in the direction that they want. And it's like, okay, well, when a guy's looking for something serious, right? If he's looking for something casual, he's gonna choose the most attractive girl who's available. Mm. But when he's looking for something serious, he's asking himself the question, what role is she gonna play in my life? Because I'm gonna play a role in hers. What value is she bringing to the relationship that's complementary to what I'm bringing, right? And that comes out of, you know, <laughs> she's like, is yeah, I'm bringing, bringing value. That's so what you're bringing she wants to know. 100%. That's all right. She's going to take her. <laughs> like Coco knows. Coco knows, like, no, mommy, please. That's all good. That's okay. That's not how you get a man, Coco. <laughs> exactly. I mean, she's getting my attention, right? Yeah. She's getting our attention. Exactly. So actually, maybe she's doing something she's right. Cool. She's yeah. she's ahead of the curve. She is she is ahead of the curve. She's got exactly. your attention because she Go looks on, good, Coco. but can she hold your attention? Later. That's the truth. That is the question. We'll see what happens when we come out this door. <laughs> she does it. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of um, a lot of girls today sometimes think, oh, well, as long as I'm spending time with him and we're sleeping together, that's enough for him to commit to me. And that doesn't work because that's what every girl does. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's about the value you bring outside of the sexual intimacy and spending time together. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, it's like, okay, do you just get him a new toothbrush because you see he hasn't changed it for a few months? Do you offer to pick up his dry cleaning? When he comes back from the gym, which, you know, girlfriends of mine would do, if I come back from the gym, protein shake, breakfast, ready made. Do you know what I mean? And I know this sounds very like, oh, traditional and a woman has to do this. It's not that you have to do that. But like I said, it's about asking the question, especially if he's the kind of masculine guy who is ambitious on his purpose. You can see he's doing bits. 
it's asking yourself, how can I make his life easier? Right. Get to know him. What is it that he needs? What is it? Can you help out with? But does that fall into love language? Because if you see he's time poor and you do these kind like gestures, mm. then essentially like you're helping him make life easier or better. Yeah. You know, so I, I guess it's if it falls into the love language that he might desire. Yeah. Yeah. It can, yeah. Like love language could be a thing for sure. You know, if he appreciates quality time or acts mm. of service, absolutely. That can definitely play a part. But like I remember one time like. I was doing a show in, in, in Cardiff and one of the other cast members, she was from South Africa and she was only here doing the show for the few months that we were doing it. And, you know, we had a lot of chemistry and stuff and, you know, she was very attractive and, you know, so we're like, okay, you know, we're here for a few months, so let's just enjoy what it's going to be for the few months. So we already knew that there was, you know, there was no real longevity to it because she lives over there, I live here. But every time I stayed over, she would, like, offer to do my clothes. She would, like cook for breakfast for like me and her house (laughs) and I was like I was not even considering this but just from that I was like maybe I should try and make it work with this girl (laughs) you know what I mean because I I I think that was the first time I'd ever experienced that and so it's interesting I remember from that like you know girlfriends I've had they've been very much like like that and I think for a guy as well you know (laughs) maybe this is too exposing for guys but you know, especially when you're younger, you, you do very much just chase the girl who you feel is the most attractive. And you realize they're human beings too. And, you know, same as girls, you chase the guy who's maybe the most attractive or the most successful. And it's like, well, you know, what value is this person adding to my life? So that's why I would say it's not the most attractive woman who gets the guy, it's the most valuable one to him, for sure. Yeah, you're right. 100% right. You said about she was in South Africa. Yeah. Long distance relationships. Oh yeah. Uh, when we put a few questions out to a little group chat, long distance relationships was quite a big one that came mm. up. How do you handle long distance distance relationships? Is there a point of it? Mm. Like, do you break up? Do you stick in it and then come back again? Maybe after six six months to a year, will that relationship be the same? These are all questions which I hear quite a lot, not just from friends but also from people listening to the show. Yeah. What advice would you give that? Yeah, great question. I know this too well because there was a girlfriend of mine who I was with for two years. She lived in Australia and it's like, you couldn't get further away from me if you try. (laughs) That's literally the opposite end of the globe. But I, because one of the films I booked was taking me out there and then I just stayed there. So I ended up living there, um, mainly to make it work with her and if we could make a life work together. I would say the thing with long distance, I would say it depends if it's so far that I think if it's if it's close enough that you can go for like a long weekend, so like if they live in like France or like the Netherlands, you know, like a, we're Europe. in the UK, right? So mm-hmm. if they live in Europe where like, okay, you can go from like Thursday night to maybe Monday morning, I think that's fine so long as you can do that at least once a month. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But even with distance, I would say that I think it's important if you're serious about each other that you have a soon enough goal where you're going to close that distance. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. Because I reckon you could go in a relationship three months without actually physically seeing each other. But if you know that come the end of the three months, you're going to be in a much closer proximity again. Yeah. uh, There's there's goals to hit. Yeah. Whereas otherwise it's you're just two people online. No, I I literally mean like you're going to be in the same country. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. 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 So close proximity living together whatever that might be yeah 100 percent, yeah because i think what can happen is that one or even both of them if you've been doing long distance for like a year and there's no immediate or there's no plans to be like okay now we're going to be in the same place so we're not doing long distance one or both people can start to resent the distance part of the relationship mm. so then it seems like they're starting to resent the relationship mm. but they just resent the distance part which is now playing into how they feel about the actual relationship. Yeah. Well, everyone wants a goal, right? There's always an mm. end goal. And if you're going to be in a relationship with someone, you don't want your entire relationship over however many months, years yes. to be apart. Yeah. So you need the end goal of knowing where it's going, mm. right? It gives you both a certain sense of... Stability. Stability, that's the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, like you know what you're working towards. Yeah. Whereas if it's just two people dating or in a relationship far away from each other, it's like, where, where what is going on? Yeah. So yeah. I think you need sort of an end goal if it's going to work, maybe. Yeah, I agree. Do you reckon there's um, 
we hear a lot about boundaries and stuff as well. Mm. Do you reckon there's sort of overstepping boundaries mm. in relationships and where it's like things just shouldn't go? You know, this is a relationship. It isn't a friendship type thing. Mm. Or what, what's your view there? We say relationship or friendship. Too, or what do you sorry, mean? sorry, like romantic relationship and friendship. Ah. Like how I'd act around my friends. Is that the same way I'd act around my girlfriend? Right. I don't know. Probably not. I think yeah. there's a split between two and there's overstepping the boundary on either side yes. where that relationship can become more just like you know friends rather than keeping that a romantic relationship yes yeah i see so part of building a relationship relationship with someone is discover discovering and establishing the boundaries as these situations come up so um and there's no kind of right or wrong boundary it's really down to the individual you know, like some people have open relationships. So the boundary of, you know, sleeping with someone else, that's the boundary they don't have. Some people are very maybe traditional, maybe in religious. So it's like, okay, you can't speak to another man without me, or you can't speak to another woman unless I'm in the room. Right. I think that's even the Mike Pence rule <laughs> from yeah. like, from like the uh, Trump administration. So in, in terms of, in terms of what's right, it's really down to the couple. And I would say, you know, if a new situation or something comes up that you feel has crossed your boundary, one, I would say, you know, don't necessarily assume they know that because if you haven't, if you've never communicated that, how are they going to know? Um, and two, just say, hey, look, this didn't make me feel comfortable because of X, Y, and Z. Is this a boundary that we can have for each other? You know, like, how do you feel about that? Um, yeah. Does that answer? Yeah. 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 No, I, I think I see where you're going as well, but you hold a certain persona when you're with your friends versus when you're with your girlfriend. Yeah. Is yeah. that kind of what you were saying yeah. as well? Yeah. Okay. I know I'd agree because I know that I'd have sort of jokes with my girlfriends that I probably wouldn't, you wouldn't have in a romantic relationship with your boyfriend. You know, I there, see what you're saying. there's jokes that go that way and then there's, you know. There's like, is, is there a separation or can the two kind of cross over? That was kind of my I, I see what you're over. saying. Yeah, because yeah, we have different versions of ourselves. Um, because how I'd act around the boys, yes, is probably not the same type of banter yeah. I'd have around. You're still yourself, right? It's yeah, just, still yourself. Yeah, but yeah. it's like different environments. If that makes sense. Like, yeah, I think one thing I don't. This is how I would approach it. How you are with your boys? Does your girlfriend still like you? That's a great question. That's a great question. If she does, do oh, your does. thing. <laughs> if she's like. I just don't like who you are when you're with your boys. Yeah. yeah. Then be mindful of that. Because one, you can spend time with your boys without her, which is fine. So on the occasions that she's with you, maybe you can prioritize more the relationship or what makes her feel comfortable. And then when, you're, when she's not there, you do what you want with your boys. Because sometimes, and this can happen, right? Sometimes it's like, oh, I love this person. We all have different sides to ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. you've got, you know, Tom, the boyfriend, then the son, and then eventually a father, if you want to have kids, likely with you, right? But sometimes we can go into environments and you're like, wow, I don't like who you are when you're this you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, like, <laughs> sounds great. I remember sometimes if I would um, go, you know, my mom at, used to be a direct sales director for Thomson Reuters here in Canary Wharf. And I remember when I was younger and if I would go into work with her because I had a day off school or something, she was like a completely different woman to who I knew mum to be. And I was like, yeah. I don't like this mum. I she's don't scared. like who this person. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I was like, I don't like this mum. And she's still the same person. Yeah. So yeah, I think ask, ask your partner, like, do you, do you like who I am? Or, or better, do you dislike who I am <laughs> when yeah. I'm with, this, yeah, with these yeah, people? Yeah. For sure. And I think that would help you get the balance. I think, you know, we talked about work earlier and trying to keep work separate. Yes. I think that's what I am in my head. Work me is not that pleasant, if I'm being completely honest. Yes. Like, I'm here for a reason. I'm not here to be friends with everyone. Yes. You know, sounds a bit like, oh, mate, shut up. But it's true. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm here to make money. I'm here to make a career. And in my head, I want to go as high as I possibly can. Yes. And that doesn't come by just lounging around and you know being like that comes by working hard having a bit about you and getting shit done yes in my relationship i try and keep those two almost like an alter ego that's what i was saying before about the work thing i wanted to keep it I separate see. and i don't i don't want to bring that in but sometimes when i speak to her and i'm in that work mode and i'm like well, i'm doing this like well we got to go here we got to we got to get this done she's mm. like whoa like that's not the tom i know like you just said then about 
you and your mum. Yeah. What advice? What, what advice would you give there, or if, if anything, because that that it can get a bit toxic trying to join the two together. But sometimes, if I'm on a call or you know, it's work from home, mm. and she's there, that's a hard thing to kind of balance. Where like, I need to be in one mode talking with a client, in a different mode five minutes later talking with. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um, and I've been in the exact situation, you know, I have a podcast as well, where on a shoot day, I'm shooting with five guests, I'm liaising, you know, my assistants, I have the contracts come in, I'm liaising with our producer, whatever. And I had it with a girlfriend of mine where the first time she saw me go into work mode, she was like, oh my gosh, I'm so used to having your attention. And she just started an argument at, with me out of nowhere <laughs> because she was leaving. It's about me. Literally. <laughs> and, you know, she was, you know, and she's amazing. I wish her all the best. She's an amazing person. But I remember after the fact, she was like, yeah, I, I'll be honest. I just started that with you because I wanted your attention because I, f- I felt your focus was not on me anymore. Yeah, interesting, yeah. So, and I remember one thing that really helped us in that situation was I said, okay, when I, I was in work mode, so I don't care about you. But when I go into this mode, this is how I can feel supported. And you just understand that anything I do is not a rejection of you. Okay. And I think especially... Obviously, I'm a guy, I'm biased, especially as a man speaking to a woman. I think it's really important that we validate how she feels. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, when it, in my experience, when she's starting an argument, she wants attention. It's because she's feeling rejected from your affection or your attention. Mm. So sometimes just saying this is not a rejection of you. But, babe, I'm doing this, especially it's like I'm doing this to give us the life that we want. Yeah, it's reassurance and communication. It always That's exactly comes back. what it is. Reassurance a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's if you love someone, it's not like, you know, pandering to them. Mm. Sometimes they just need that. Yeah. They just need you to just talk about it. And yeah. But I, w- okay. I would also say, like, in that situation, as the girlfriend, mm-hmm. you need to provide him the space to be the man that he's meant to be, because that's why you chose him. Yeah. Completely agree on that as well. See I, what I'm saying? I feel like the biggest thing that I, I look for, especially when I'm in, in work mode, mm. is, and I, you know, other guys might think like this, maybe not, is just knowing that person backs you. And mm. it's such a minor thing, but that's, that's to me, if, if I was to say what's the best thing about my relationship, it's even when I'm down and out sometimes, even when I'm, I'm burnt out, even when I'm having an awful stretch where things just aren't going my way, she always backs me. Mm. And she's like, Go figure it out. You always figure it out. Mm. It was like I'll, I'm always here. Yes. Like go figure it out, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. And knowing that person backs you is like lights a massive switch in me. And there's times where Meg's probably listening to this now. She's probably been like, okay, I don't back you, but I'm not going to say this right now. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. But I feel like for guys, a lot of the time, guys just want someone to to back them and someone to really just be like, you know what? You're going for it. I'm going to be here every step of the way, no matter what happens. Yeah, this is this is one of the things I tell, I teach women. That is one of the most attractive things for a guy, is you being his biggest cheerleader. Yeah. You're his biggest cheerleader. He's like, you're not going anywhere. Because as men, we already know, ain't no one coming to save you, man. It's on you. Mm. So especially when we have someone that you're doing it for as well, who can help inspire you, that's amazing. You know, and that's amazing that you have that. And one thing I would say, you know, for any of the ladies listening, if they're in a situation where their boyfriend goes into work mode, and sometimes it's like, this feels so separate from me and I don't like it. So just go to him, just say, how can I support you in this? Because he might just say, hey, you supporting me is just allow me to do what I need to do. Cool. You're part of it now. You're part of the team. Yeah. Because even if that's just you just being there and just being vigilant, you're now part of the team because you're contributing to him getting stuff done. Or maybe he's like, actually, could you do this for me? You're like, yeah, babe, sure. I also think as well, you need to accept that you both live your own lives. Very true. Right? Yeah. And no matter what, you're both going to go for on your path. So it's, a, again, yeah, mm. like looking out for the person in a sense where it's like you have to respect that it's their life. Yes. And you either support that and get behind them. Or you, or you don't. Yeah. No, <laughs> is that also vice versa as well about the cheerleader thing? A hundred percent. Like if I'm her biggest cheerleader. I would love that, yeah. Like from a guy, mm. if I had someone behind me going, go do it, babe. Like go focus on what you've got to do mm-hmm. and I'll be here if, if it all goes wrong or if you want to chat or, you know, it's that reassurance again. Yes. And just like a security blanket for one another, isn't it? Sure. Is I think when you go into something that's scary or a new business or whatever, you kind of want to know 
people have got your back. Yeah, of course. Whether it's, you know, romantic relationships, friendships, friendships. family. Mm. Yeah. Whatever it might be, it's giving somebody a support blanket. Yeah. We did a little Q&A. I'll end on this because this time has flown by. Oh, go for it. We got three questions that okay. I wanted to read out. And this is from a female standpoint. And the mm. first one is, why are men so afraid to commit to relationships? <laughs> that, was, that was the first question. <laughs> oh, that one tickled me, that. <laughs> it's a very good question. Ah, oh, there's, there's a few things at play here. Okay. Okay. One thing is, we have to remember back in the day, way back in the day, a big incentive for men to enter a committed relationship was to have sexual access. Now you can have sex without commitment. So if we, and if he's the kind of guy who has options, sexual options where he can indulge in that, unless he's ready to settle down, there's no real incentive for him to commit. Unless you're the kind of woman who's bringing that value, then he goes, oh, I don't want to lose you. And then you're in the position as the woman to say, okay, this is my standard, we're exclusive. The other thing I would say is that another reason could be maybe he feels he's not the man he wants to be he hasn't become the man, so he can be who he wants to be in the relationship, right? Because he may feel, okay, he knows there's an expectation. We know as men, like when we're in a relationship, there's a level of expectation. So if he feels he's not the man he needs to be where he can be who he wants to be within the relationship and he values who you are as a woman, it's kind of like swinging a bat, you know, at like in baseball. He's like, okay, I don't want to swing and miss, so I'm going to come back when I have a bigger bat. Right? Does that make sense? That's a great, yeah. Yeah. The other thing I would say, I don't know if that you might, ladies might not like this. Um, getting into a relationship for a guy, and this is ironic considering what's just happened, is kind of like getting a puppy. You love the puppy. You love the affection it gives you. <laughs> you love showing it, showing your family and friends the puppy. You give it so much love. It gives you so much love. There's a responsibility that comes with having the puppy. You have to take the puppy out twice a day. You have to water and feed the puppy. Any decision you make in life, you have to have that puppy in mind. If the puppy's in a bad state, everyone looks at you. What are you doing, bro? Why is this puppy in a bad state? If the puppy is unhappy, usually everyone goes, why is the puppy unhappy? Everyone looks at you. So because a lot of the time, you know, I said about, we talked about earlier, taking on the responsibility, a lot of guys see getting into a relationship is taking a lot of responsibility and sometimes you may not be in a place in your life where you can do that or where you want to do that because it is taking a lot of responsibility i get i'm going from and you tell me you're a woman i get from the female side it's like oh i get this person i get an emotional support i get someone to take me out on dates i get someone who i can look up to i get someone to provide for me etc then as a guy it's like okay I'm getting someone where I have to emotionally support them. I'm getting someone where I have to provide for them. I'm getting someone that I have to potentially die for them. Like there's a lot of responsibility. I'm not saying that women don't take on responsibility for a relationship as well, but from the men, man perspective, he feels there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And so it, he really has to either want the puppy or want a puppy mm -hmm. in order for him to go. That's why I say to ladies like timing is important. Yeah. Timing is very important. And I don't think it's guy. fear of commitment either. It's no. they they have to want to commit. Yeah. They're not scared. Yeah. They either want to or they don't. Yeah. And I would also say, and this is just the reality of the landscape. We live in a day and age because of, you know, sexual liberation, all of this stuff. Most people are dating more than one person at a time. Now you might have a guy if he's quite desirable, attractive, ambitious, successful, intelligent, confident. He may be dating four women at a time. But only one of them is he taking seriously. The others are just usually either sexual indulgence or play and validation for him. So to three of them, it's like he's emotionally unavailable. But it's like he's just emotionally unavailable to you because his heart is somewhere else. That happens a lot. And women do the same thing. Like if a woman's talked to a few guys, guys like, why aren't she going on dates with me? Or why does she never want to come back to mine? It's because she already has someone she's doing that with. Mm. And you're just not him. Interesting. That happens more often than people realize. And they're like, oh, she's just using me and she might be. Or he's just using me, he might be. But it's not because he can't have a relationship. Because if he's been in a relationship before, then he knows what it means to show up for a relationship. Mm -hmm. He just may not be choosing to do that with you. Interesting. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The second one was, 
Can guys have girlfriends and girls have guy friends? <laughs> this, is, this often comes up. I would say, okay. Okay, can girls have friends who are guys? 100% they do it all the time. Can guys have girls who are friends? I think majority, no, with the exception of, okay, what well, I should say this. Yes, but there is one criteria that has to be met is that he does not find her attractive. Yeah, I agree. If he finds her attractive, cannot be friends with her. Because as a guy, it's like, okay, well, if I'm attracted to you and we got on really well and we're friends, if we're friends, that means I think you're an amazing person. Of course, I'm going to want more. Why, like, why would I not? That is a natural, <laughs> it's natural, mm -hmm. right? I'm attracted to you and we're really close friends. That's what a relationship is. Why wouldn't I want more? So I would say, now the thing is with guys is the threshold for what they find attractive is lower than what women generally find attractive. So most guys find most women attractive and most women find most guys unattractive, right? So as a whole, can men and women be friends under that, situ under that circumstance? Yes, outside of that, I would say no. And I say this with love to any of my female friends watching. I have a few female friends, but I would not be friends with a woman that I'm attracted to. I wouldn't do it. Even out of respect for my own, you know, for like a girlfriend of mine, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. So controversial opinion, but that's what I believe. I think it's better to- I agree. Just keep it safe, I think. What's your view from a girl's standpoint? Do I think guys and girls can be friends? Um, yeah, they can hold like friendships, that's for sure. And uh, obviously it makes it way more straightforward if you're single to have male and female relationships that are just friendships, which is great. And then mm. I think it's it's hard, isn't it, really, to go beyond that. Um, talking from a single point of view, obviously I have male and female friends. Mm -hmm. How I might feel about my boyfriend having a female friend, I, th I suppose you're probably quite right as well. It's I don't know, it's hard. Does that come back to trust, though? The whole trust side of things. Should, should I tell you what I think it is? One thing I say is that a guy being in the friend zone with a girl is the same as a girl being in the friends with benefit zone with a guy. So if you're a guy and you're in the friend zone with a girl, she's getting all the emotional benefits as if you're a boyfriend without giving any of the physical or sexual intimacy. If you're in a friends with benefit situation with a guy, he's getting all the sexual and physical benefits as if you're a girlfriend without giving you any of the emotional investment or the emotional security. Mm. And so because of that, it's kind of like saying, okay, can guys and girls be just friends with benefits? Technically, yes, but usually someone, not all the time, but more often it's the woman, is going to get feelings or is going to want more. It's natural. She's being physically intimate with you, spending time with you. Why wouldn't she want more? And it's the same for guys when they're in like, the friend zone with a girl. I think is, you can tell me what you think, Lauren. Mm. There are a lot of, there are a lot of girls who have male friends that the reason they're friends isn't because he wanted to do a friendship, because she made it a friendship because he took interest and she wasn't interested. That's how a lot of male female friendships so, start. So, sorry, you're friends because he... You friend zoned him? Yes. Um, no, not necessarily. Like I have a lot of like work friends I suppose they are work friends and mm. I don't meet up with them outside of work, but would actually still, they're not just colleagues, they are friends. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, like none of them have ever asked me on a date or sort of expressed interest, but I would put them in the category of a friend because I would talk to them more than just work, you know? You I get that. Conversate I, with them and whatnot. Yeah, I, I would, so what I would classify, I get what you mean, they're like work friends, mm -hmm. but the fact that you prefix it with work friends, mm. I would say that a friend is someone who you would, meet for coffee with you ca you catch up with them like you actually dedicate time to yeah. seeing that person so because you have different levels of friendships mm -hmm. do you know what i mean so when we're saying friends i'm meaning like that yeah i agree constant communication sense. i guess like open conversation that can yeah where, where where you intentionally dedicate time to spend time with that person that's what i would say is a is a friendship mm. that's yeah. what i would say talking on coffee that's the last question oh yes so the last question of the podcast is coffee a bad idea for a first date no, it's not a bad idea. Um, the reason I say that is because one, I know dinner date is really popular. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
one, if you go on a dinner date and in the starter, you already know that you're not with this person. Now you have to sit through the rest of the day. Oh God, I can think that's of difficult. Worse. Even I think even for women, that's difficult. Right. Actually. Yeah. More for women, that's, that's awful. Difficult. Because if yeah. you've met on a dating app, you yes. haven't met the person in, in person. Exactly. But as soon as you sit down, it's quite quickly, like their, like their mannerisms, everything about them, exactly. you can quite quickly pick up whether you want to spend a 15 minute walk or this rest of the dinner. I agree. And when, once you're sat at the dinner, I mean, you can just make the most out of it and they could be an interesting person for sure. Yes. But yeah. while there's a lot more commitment into meeting someone from a dating app and sitting at a table and having to see it through. I agree. Like, do you want dessert? No, thank you. <laughs> exactly. And I've even talked to sure. yep. yeah. Yes, yeah. please. Bill. I'm out. Give me <laughs> that chocolate mousse immediately. And I've talked to I've talked to women where they will intentionally if they're not sure about a guy, they will intentionally want him to take them somewhere really nice so that if she doesn't like the day, at least she gets like a really nice outing. Right? To compensate for not really wanting to spend that time with him. Um I would also say that going for a coffee date you're both going to be sober so you're going to know by the end if you actually like the person or were you just kind of intoxicated um and also because there's no time pressure you can spend an hour and then be like oh i have to go somewhere or i have to do something you've got to know that person and then if it goes well then like go out on a date like a proper date like invest in them um but the reason i say there's nothing wrong if you're uh you know if you're a girl and you're like no i have has to be a dinner date etc the one thing I said, the risk with that is if you're saying that a guy has to do that, you have that expectations, just know that, especially if he's going to be paying, he's going to have expectations of you. Mm-hmm. So if he's like, okay, if I'm taking you out and I'm picking you up when you're saying this is the demand that you have, I expect something in return for that. And that's the expectation. That's the dynamic you're setting. I think you have to be careful with that because then it can seem quite transactional. Yeah. Right. But I would say, look, if someone, if you've been talking to someone and they genuinely think you're a great person and you're like, hey, let's just meet for a coffee just to kind of have the introduction. There should be no problem why they yeah. shouldn't meet with you. If it goes really well, you can still go for dinner. I've, I've done <laughs> that before. Like we met for a coffee. It went amazing. And then we that, and that turned into dinner. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Go for coffee. Suss it allow out, the space for dinner and if yeah. it goes well go for dinner well, and if it doesn't discuss, you can, like, you can go discuss away. the cuisine you want to eat you know yeah. there's no like you don't <laughs> have to four prepare or five different cuisines you're like oh you like Italian do you just cancel yeah. the other four <laughs> under just the table. Go <laughs> and before you wrap on the on this I, I've just got a question yeah go for it so we'll have to go both ways so dating apps like yeah. three like X for a guy we'll go down the word X but okay. three X if you were on a dating app Mm. scrolling through Mm -hmm. three things you wouldn't want to see on a female's account or like that are just straight we're going left so i would say i would say they're x but what i will okay i'll give you three things that give an impression that doesn't help you as the woman okay first one i would say is when you put in your bio not looking for hookups not looking for one night stands swipe left that does not serve you the reason that doesn't serve you is because the guys who are just looking for hookups, they've already swiped right on you. They're going, oh yeah, she's hot, swipe right. So they've not even read your bio. Second thing is the guys who are actually open to something genuine, who are actually going to read your bio, all you're communicating to him is, I have scars and I'm not over it. Yeah, I was going to say, you're sort of setting a precedent. You're saying like, yeah. this has happened to me so much that now I have to put it in my bio. He's no more. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so in his head, he's thinking... So basically what you're saying is I'm going to have to work harder to gain your trust because of a pre- what a previous guy did. Why would I sign myself up to that, mm-hmm. right? So that's not saying you shouldn't set that boundary or standard, but a better way to say it would be looking for a genuine connection I can explore life with. P.S. Let's grab pizza. I love that, yeah. right? So that's you're still right. setting the boundary, but you're doing it in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. Um, no... There's nothing wrong with bikini photos, but if thirst it, traps, thirst traps, no thirst trap photos. Mm. Agreed. You can post thirst trap photos and you can get 150 matches, but 149 with them will be, will be only interested in you for one thing. No, it depends on what you're looking for, right? If you're looking for a genuine you're connection, don't be doing that. I would say don't do that, for sure, <laughs> yeah. for sure. No hookups in the bar. <laughs> no, hook no, hook no, <laughs> no hookups, no thirst traps. No hookups, no thirst traps, <laughs> for sure. Um, and one other thing I would say, <laughs> this isn't nice, but I'm just gonna be honest. Um, you always have pictures that show your face and your body. 
Okay. Not just your face okay. and not just your body. Okay, I get it. Yeah, you want to know what you're signing up for, right? And it, it sure. could go the same way for women. I agree. I, a lot of what you've said, I would I say, agree. goes exactly the same for women. 100%. I mean, 100%. when you, there are some gym pictures that you see it and you I said think, that earlier. yeah, yeah, Those no. Topless gym like, selfies. Tensing as hard as you can, taking a selfie. Mm. Just put a t-shirt on and sit next to your nan. <laughs> that would be much but nicer. That would actually draw me in way more. Tell me what you think. So I've talked to my female friends about this. Mm -hmm. So like girls don't mind like a nice topless photo, but it just can't be the first one. If it's the first one, it looks a bit douchebaggy. But if she like discovers it, you know, that's why. Is that not no. just no? So like a picture it's on a holiday. It's like saying put him. your bikini pop picture at the bottom of the profile. Well, guys don't really care. They're like, oh, she's hot. Great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I, st I still feel like... Yeah, I don't know. Just like that's like if you're going to be sharing yourself with somebody, yeah, like that could be classed as like an intimate image. Sure. So like, like I kind of feel like it is a it's attention seeking, isn't it? Just as a thirst trap. Yeah. Like, what kind of person are you trying to attract? Okay. Nice. So I think it it does depend on what you're looking for, but mm. the setting, you know, your first picture like. <laughs> T-shirt up. But that's God, what is I this mean. going on? Is this going on Instagram <laughs> as a short? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, don't do that, please. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I mean. It's like it says it gives up a certain impression if that's the first photo. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you're saying for you at least, you know, you're yeah. just like, yeah, I just would rather not see a topless summer yeah. photo at all. Then fair enough. Yeah, like I appreciate it. You work hard. Yeah. But, yeah, I think more genuine photos of an individual getting up to whatever they're getting up to in life. Yeah. That display all the things that you enjoy and the qualities. Yeah. That you wanna. I don't know. It's yeah. Down to the person and what yeah. they're looking for. I get you. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for coming Amazing. on. You happy? Yeah, happy. That was great. Thank you for having awesome. me.